Hi, I'm Elizabeth with Oliver Smith Jeweler. I'm here with Mr. George Reed, and we're telling you everything you need to know about the Cartier Santos, a watch with a very rich history, and that we both personally love. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I might be overstepping a little bit here. It's got to be the most important watch in the Cartier catalog. Kind of it, started it all? It's Is that why? The first, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't care how you want to phrase it, Louis Cartier has the first patent for putting lugs on a timepiece with the, the idea of attaching a strap. Right. It the seems like watch. before that, there were some watches out there, but they were all like makeshift pocket watches with tabs brazed mm -hmm. onto them, people like running a belt through, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so this was like the first, the first wristwatch. Which is a really big deal. Really big deal. So let's get into a little bit of the history behind where the Santos came from. So. We're going to go to Paris, early 1900s, uh -huh. complete transformations happening in the city. They're redoing the streets. They're putting in all this architecture. It's a really exciting time there. It was really the modernization of a city. Um, yeah. Uh, to, from, from sanitary, water streets, uh, the, the advent of uh, carriages to cars, all that stuff. They had to completely redesign the city. And, and I think Louis, as a designer, was just fascinated by it. And you can see it in a lot of his work. Right, a lot of inspiration there. So Louis Cartier is the grandson of the mm -hmm. founder of Cartier. And he's friends with a man, Alberto Santos Dumont. Yes. Now, Alberto's known for being a inventor, really at the forefront of things. Um, he's from Brazil and moves to Paris to pursue his passion for flight. So he's creating all these flying machines and flying them around Paris. Now you have to imagine what a big deal this is. Like there's no planes, there's no, you know, even like hot air no, balloons. It was like inventing a transporter or something. It, right. it was science fiction at the time. And that was one of many passions that that, that uh, Alberto and, and, and Louis shared. And, uh, and they were both part of a club, um, early yeah. pilots club. Like it, it was just crazy. Santos is having some success with his flying contraptions, but he <laughs> is frustrated because he only has a pocket watch. Has to pull it out, take a look in order to time himself. Can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, talk about like distracted by your cell phone. That seems like instant <laughs> crash to me. Like, like, like there's just no way. So it, apparently, Louis designed this in... 1904. But what we know for a fact, because it's actually on film, Mm -hmm. 1906, we have a flight uh, of, of Dumont mm -hmm. for about 21 seconds, and you can actually see him wearing Louis' watch. That's awesome. So, so yeah, so, so actual is, documentation right, from that watch. Right, the awesome. original Santos, which yeah. is where it got its name from, if yeah. you haven't picked up on that yet. So, 1911 is when Cartier officially launches the Santos to the public, yeah. made with a Jaeger movement, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. And it was available in platinum and yellow gold. Okay, and I believe. And if I'm wrong, please uh, please comment below. 25 by 35 okay. was the original size. Um, so that's big, uh, right? At the time? Especially yeah. at the time, yeah. Well, it's funny. There's no frame of reference. Um, that was the original size, whether it was big okay. or small. That's what it was, that's, you know. Yeah, because yeah, you, 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 you can't compare it to anything Good else. Point. Not like you know, oh, it's a pain right. No, it, it, it's 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 25 by 35, and that was it. So so the Santo sort of fizzles out in popularity after during the World Wars. Understandably so. We have bigger priorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, got, we have bigger <laughs> priorities. So we're going to fast forward to the 1970s. Uh, we've got Gerald Genta creating some amazing sport watches yep. in the market, and Cartier sees this as a great opportunity to re-release the very sporty Santos. Makes perfect sense. Um, the, the whole world is looking at integrated bracelets and, yes. and, and saying, you know, hey, it's, it's a Genta design and uh, it's arguable. Right. So very similar in that way. So the Santos is re-released as stainless steel mm -hmm. and on a steel bracelet. Fantastic, yep. right? In that sports model world. Then into the 80s, we see the two-tone version, which is what that's, George comes that's, that's my jam, man. And that, that was when I was first aware of watches. Like, I remember that watch so vividly. Yeah, absolutely. And two-tone was so in in the yep. 80s, too. Like, you mentioned the Panther, another Cartier hit. Yep. Um, so this is where the Santos really sort of took off. Yeah, fantastic. In 2004, we saw another release of the Santos, the Santos 100, which was a larger, more robust size for the 100th anniversary, anniversary of the yeah. Santos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in 2018, we saw another release. This is for the larger sizes that we see today in the market. Yeah, the Santos 100, especially uh, uh, the Chrono version, was probably the largest one. The The modern Chrono is very, very similar in size. I think it's a little bit thinner. Mm. Um, it's it's funny. I 
we were just talking about it. I believe that there might have been a time where the Santos was quote unquote discontinued. Yeah. But I've always been in secondary market. So for, for us in like the trenches, it never went away. I mean, it's always been a relevant watch. So if it did or if it didn't, um, it was always part of, of something I was very into and very aware of. That perfect. I think that leads us right into talking about the design yeah. of this watch and how it became so timeless. Now, there's a couple Cartier codes in this piece that this is where the Santos started it, and it's things you see throughout Cartier. Um, the first being the Roman numerals used it's, on the it's dial. It's so funny. Um, as as a retailer, anytime somebody's like, "Oh, I'm not into Roman numerals," it's like, "Oh, then you just don't like Cartier." <laughs> yeah. Or, or have you seen a Pasha? Uh, right. But yeah, that is such a deep part of their design lexicon. I mean, it's in every single watch. They hide their micro writing in there. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways we can kind of tell if your watch uh, is, is authentic or not. Yeah, sure. Um, there, there's these little codes that they kind of put into the dial that, that certainly help us on my side of the counter. The next code that you see in the Santos is that railroad track square yep. design going around it. Yep. Very cardi. And then also the blue hands started with the Santos. Really? Yes. That's amazing. Isn't that cool? I did, I did not know that. Yeah. So <laughs> three things really specific, the Santos. Well, let's talk about the overall design and the square shape because yep. this was very innovative at the pocket watch age where everything was round. And, and that's that's what I've read is that his initial inspiration was taken from a square pocket watch that he had done in the early okay. 1900s. So, mm -hmm. so that was like the direct But done by Cartier. But done, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, they, they've always um, kind of had this deep well of, of design from jewelry and from everything else, um, from other inspirations from, from India to Asia to, to, to the modern language of, yes. of Paris. It, it all kind of shows in Cartier's design. And that's something Cartier speaks on too, the structure of this square square shape was very inspired by what was going on in Paris at the time, the architecture, the changing of the streets. And we also believe that's where the screws came from on yeah, the design. It, well, and, and the bracelet always kind of reminded me of, of early aviation design as well. And I, and, and again, um, it's, it might, might just be me uh, uh, being fanciful about the watch, but I've, I always thought of like the fuselage of the plane. Where yeah. you have you have these these slabs of metal and then these rivets in it, it always kind of reminded me of that. Um, if Cartier didn't do that by design, um, um, I, I think I think he should. <laughs> it completely makes sense to me. And then, sort of finally in the design, it's the lugs, and this is what made it the first wristwatch. Yeah. But the lugs were actually created to be rounded, attached to the wrist, but yeah. how it completely integrates into the bracelet. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and and it, it is interesting to not only make make the first watch and the first. Um, timekeeper with lugs to attach a, a bracelet or a strap to, but to do it really smart, very ergonomic and make it comfortable. Um, I, I, usually you, it, it would be a, a form following function, but, um, but in, this, in this case, it was really just a, a wonderful design from its inception. Regarding the sizing and the specific metals used in the Santos, we have seen so many different combinations over the last 100 plus years. <laughs> <It's done> everything, <laughs> yeah. Everything. Uh, but currently today in the Santo style, there is a medium, a large, and an XL sizes. Medium is 35 millimeters all the way up to XL, which is a 43 millimeter piece. Yeah, the size you're wearing right now is actually not in the modern catalog, um, mm -hmm. which, is, which is kind of interesting. Correct, and you um, can find different golds, um, steels, yeah. titanium, diamonds, ceramic, yeah, everything. Diamonds, everything. Skeleton. Skeleton, Personal too. favorite. Yes. Um, and then they also do the Santos Dumont, which is uh, similar in sizing, similar in design. They, they, they both pull from the same thing. You can definitely see that they're in the same family. But a little thinner, mm -hmm. maybe a little more elegant, where Santos goes sporty. This wants to go to dinner with you. Yeah. You know, it, it slides under a sleeve like butter. It's um, it, it's it's just a fantastic watch for that 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 extra elegance. Um, uh, just just so thin, so refined, uh, just absolutely stunning. Watch. Definitely meant to be more of a dress watch, and they are currently making the Santos Dumont in a thirty-eight millimeter. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, the new one. Yeah, yes. very very cool. Yeah, which is a great size. Yep. Yep. So hopefully we covered everything you need to know about the Cartier Santos, and hopefully you're feeling as excited and as inspired about the watch as we are. If we missed anything, definitely leave us a comment below. Let us know. And make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.